So 900 grammatical mistakes in, in a small book like the Quran. I mean, the Bible is much bigger, larger than the Quran, right? And we don't claim, we don't claim that this book as Christians, we don't claim that the Holy Bible is eternal and created like the Muslims. Muslims always have claimed that the Quran is uncreated it's directly from Allah through Jibreel to Muhammad, uncreated, uncorrupted. So how can we find so many grammatical mistakes in an uncreated perfect book that Allah claims to be? A perfect book sent by him through Jibreel. How can that be? Does that mean, Muslims, if Allah claims to be God, does that mean that Allah is not perfect because his so-called perfect Quran contains mistakes. How can a perfect book contain mistakes? Muslims, please think. Please think. And don't, don't do it for me. Use your own logic. Use your brains, your God-given brains. You have a set, I hope, hopefully, you have a set of healthy brains. Use them. Don't allow any Imam to fool you. And guys, today's topic, today's topic, the topic that we're going to talk about today, is not mentioned by imams they don't dare to talk about these topics guys i kid you not they don't dare to show the grammatical mistakes to their audience to the muslims who do not know arabic and remember guys remember i hope you're with me remember more than 75 percent of the Muslim population on this planet do not know Arabic. Yes, maybe some of them can recite the Quran because you know they learned that in the madrasas, in their schools, how to recite the Quran, but they don't know what they read. They have no idea about the grammar. They have no idea, right? So today we're going to bring it up. So you have to be really focused, guys. Don't allow anyone, don't allow anyone to distract you because it's a lot of meat. It's really a difficult topic, especially if you don't know Arabic like me. Uh, so you have to be very focused at all times. If you hear, if you come here to learn, if you want to learn something about the grammatical mistakes of the Quran, stay focused. Don't allow anyone uh, to distract you. We are, we are not here to play games. We're not here to, to have fun. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we love to make jokes and whatnot, but you know, we need to be focused at all times because this is a really disastrous topic that Imams do not dare to bring up. They never talk about these topics. And this is the first time that I, I'm bringing you this new research. I've put a lot of energy, guys, I kid you not. I've put a lot of hours in this material that I'm going to present to you. So if you love me as I love you, please you need to spread our videos. You need to be focused at all times so we can show you and uncover the hidden secrets that we are going that we are about to present to you for the very first time on YouTube. This is new material for the people who do not know. Last time I so as we mentioned guys as a small introduction, you can find many videos that I did about this topic, the spelling disasters. So that's the last topic that we talked about, the spelling disasters. Is the Quran from Allah or humans? You can be the judge of that after today again. And we mentioned a couple of uh, examples, if you, re if you can uh, remember. We showed you examples like these, how Allah <laughs> does need to change his mind every time. And to, uh, as you see, you can see the clear prove in front of you that Allah sometimes write the word the wife of right in a different way sometimes with a close T T marbuta and T maftuha that's what, what we call it in Arabic close T and open T right so if Allah claims to be God and uh, the Quran is the perfect book of Allah how can this so-called perfect book contain such mistakes but this one as you see is incorrect the the Underneath one is the correct way to write the wife of, the wife of, right? So I'm going to be exposing the ignorance of uh, Rob Christian uh, about the Arabic language since he does not know about the dagger alif right here. When the dagger alif was supposed to be used, this is the dagger alif right here, looks like a dagger. It's called alif al khinjiriya in Arabic. Why the Quran writes it in a Rasm al Uthmani as the dagger alif. <clears throat> For example, in chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 184, it, it says, 
طعام مسكين right in other قراءات of the Quran it says طعام مساكين so in the Quran if it's written مساكين they would put a little dagger alif here in other for those who read it in uh, in another قراءة but if in the regular قراءة it is written in مسكين right so why is it written مسكين in this one for example it's talking about for Fasting. Fasting is a prescribed number of days, but if whoever of you is ill or on, on a journey, then let them fast an equal number of days after Ramadan. For those who can only fast with extreme difficulty, compensation can be made by feeding a needy person. Right for 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 every day not fasted, so a needy person. So for a person who breaks his fast one day, he feeds the poor, uh, feeds one poor person. But for a person who continuously breaks his fast for more than one day, or uh, uh, you know some days he fasts, some days he doesn't, he yutam masakin. He more than one poor person. So masakin is more than a poor person, more than one poor person. So that means he fe he feeds more than one poor person on the days that he broke his fast. So this is why Alif al khanjiriya the dagger Alif, is used to make it easier in the Arabic recitation here. In another word, we know that there are other types of... There's Al-Khat al-Imna'i, which means that we can write... We have to write it in the, for example, Imra'ah. We, we can write it in the Qur'an as with Ta, the closed Ta. And with a ta maftuha, right? The ta maftuha is not allowed to be written if we're writing in al khat al imla'i, meaning the regular writing of Arabic. It is only written if it's in al rasm al Quran, right? In al khat al Quran, right? So if it's written in al rasm or al rasm al Uthmani, right? We can write it because there are two types of tribes. There is an Arab tribe of Arabia long, long ago that used to write with uh, ta al maftuha. It's called the tribe of Tay or Tay. Right, it is it is from Al Jazeera Al Arabiya, Shimal Al Jazeera Al Arabiya. They used to write the ta, the ta al maftuha or the ta al marbuta. They used to write the ta with the ta al maftuha. So the Quran writes it both in ta al, you know, the closed ta, because some Arabs used to write it with the closed ta, and other Arabs used to write it with a open ta of Imra, for example. So now we go to Al Khat Al Arud, right? Al Khat Al Arud. It is Khat al-Shair, al-Shair al-Arabi. It is written for the poetry of Arabic. So, for example, let me give you an example. If we were to write, for example, if we were to write uh, هذا, right? We would write it with هذا and ألف. تكتب عروضيا, right? If it is written عروضيا in Shair as هذا, right? With uh, two meds. As you can see here, if I'm, I'll zoom it in so you guys can see clearly, uh, this is al uh, This is the shair type of, you know, the poetry type of Arabic, which is be written as, for example, hada right here, and it will be written as like that in al khat al imlai, right? In the regular khat, regular Arabic writing, it is be written like that. But in shair in poetry, it could be written as hada with two meds. One alif here and one alif at the end, right? For example, another one. Fahimu. Fahimu in a regular Arabic is written with alif at the end. But with sha'ar Arabic, it's written without an alif at the end. Fahimu. Like that. So this is how it will be written uh, according to the Arabic language. Another example is the correct way to write ilmun is like this. With a... Uh, Dhamma on top of the meme, right? Ilmun, but it will be written عروضياً in شعر and poetry, a way of Arabic, it will be written with a noon at the end. Ilmun, with a noon. So this is Ilmun with, uh, in regular Arabic, Imla'iyan, which is um, uh, Dhamma on top of the meme. There is no noon, while here in the شعر way, there is a noon, right? Ilman. Alman will be written here in in the in the uh, in the Arabic uh, in the regular Arabic without a noon. Here it will be written Alman without imad but with a noon in a poetry way of Arabic. So Alman as well in regular Arabic is written with double kasra, right? Alman. There's no noon while here it's written Alman with a noon. 
So there will be on the A, there will be a Kasra, on the Mim, there will be a Kasra, and then there will be an Ilmin. Right? This is how it's written in poetry way, and this is how it's written in uh, regular Arabic way.